Dun, 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 dun. I thought this was uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but it's Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. So when you're reading, what can you do if you don't understand a word? Well, the first thing to do is nothing. Ignore the word, carry on reading, keep going. Um, if that doesn't work, uh, then you could guess the meaning. So we'll go back to the word, find the word, and uh, guess what it means, then carry on reading. Um, if that doesn't work, then stop reading and get another book. It's probably going to take too much time. If for some reason you can't stop reading or you can't get another book, you could ask someone what it means. Uh, don't do this at two o'clock in the morning. Um, if this doesn't work as an emergency, if, it, if there's really nothing else you can do, if there's a word that's really annoying you because you don't know what it means, then you can look in a dictionary. Looking in a dictionary, it's not something... Looking in a dictionary is not bad, but it shouldn't be your first choice, or your second choice, or your third choice, or your fourth choice. It's an emergency. Um, a dictionary is kind of like a hammer. Um, a hammer is a very useful tool for some things, but if your TV is broken, don't use a hammer to fix it. And the same with a dictionary. Um, so, this is the input hypothesis. We acquire language when we understand messages in the language. So there are some objections to the input hypothesis. Not everybody believes this. And one objection is that learning is more efficient. So you can acquire a language, but it's going to take you a long time. If you sit down and learn these few words and these few bits of grammar, you can put them together and do something. Uh, and this may be more efficient. Another argument is when we talk about learning and acquisition, um, you can't sometimes say whether something is learning or acquisition. You can't neatly split learning and acquisition into two things. Another objection is about second language acquisition and first language acquisition. Um, second language is a foreign language, which I'll talk about in a moment. First language is your native language. Um, and another objection is that this is not really science. So it's called an input hypothesis. It sounds like it's science, but it's not really science. So let's just look at second language and first language acquisition. First language is your mother tongue. Um, and... Your mother tongue is necessary. It's very important you can understand what your mother says from when you were very small. Uh, you spend several hours a day listening to your first language, listening to your mother tongue. Mostly you're playing. So for most of the first few years of your life, when you're acquiring your first language, it's playing, it's fun. And almost always, the first language acquisition is successful. Almost 100% of people can speak their first language. Not only can they speak their first language, they can speak their first language very well, and they can understand their first language. They can usually read in it. They can often write in their first language. So often people become very, very good at their first language. On the other hand, Foreign language or second language acquisition, um, well, your foreign language is not, is not really necessary. You don't really need English if you live in Japan. It may be useful. It may be nice to have. You may get a better job. You may be able to talk to more people. You may be able to enjoy movies and books. It may be helpful if you travel. But to be really honest... A foreign language is not really necessary. You don't need it. Um, you will spend maybe a few minutes per week on your foreign language. Even if you're studying in school, um, you may have two or three English lessons a week. But some of those English lessons, the teacher may be speaking Japanese. The textbook, you may be reading Japanese. 
you might be translating into Japanese or from Japanese. You may not be looking at the textbook. You may be looking at your smartphone and a message from your friend. You may not be 100% listening. So it probably adds up to just a few minutes a week, which is not as much as the several hours per day that we spend on our mother tongue. And it's play with our mother tongue, whereas we're studying in our foreign language. Um, and usually foreign language acquisition fails. Most people who spend time, months and years studying a foreign language, at the end of it, they don't really feel that they can speak the language or use the language very well. So unfortunately, compared to the mother tongue, which is almost always successful, very often foreign language acquisition fails. So we can see there is a big difference between first and second language conditions. The conditions, the number of hours we study, the situation we study in is very different. Um, the results are also very different. Um, the mechanism, perhaps the different results are all because of the different conditions. So perhaps the reason why we're, we always fail with second language and always succeed with the first language is just as simple as how much time and how effective the time is that we spend on our first language acquisition and how little time and how ineffective the time is on our second language. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, so science then, so the, the one of the objections is that the input hypothesis is not science. Now, um, the scientific process is as follows. First, we have a question. In this case, the question is how how do we how come I can speak English? Is the question. We have a hypothesis. We have a prediction. So based on this, we predict something. Then we try and test. So if we test the prediction, did this happen? Did this not happen? And then we analyze what happens next. So this is the scientific process. Now, um, can we really do this with the input hypothesis? Can we, can we make a prediction? Can we test this? Um, lots of things I don't think we really can test. Um, we can't really separate language and acquisition. Uh, how do we know if we were thinking? And is it, is it just a circular argument that the input hypothesis says that learning is conscious and that acquisition is subconscious? So this is like a circular argument that then will tell us, oh, this is learning and this is acquisition. Does it really tell us anything useful? Um, is it valid? Well, Probably, this is probably not science. So the input hypothesis, I don't think is really a hypothesis. It's not really science. Um, possibly input alone is not enough. We need to do something with the language. We need to do some speaking. We need to do some actions. Simply understanding the messages, maybe not enough. And another thing to think about is social factors. Uh, social factors are very important with language. Our mother tongue is the language that our mother speaks. And we have a very strong social bond, a very strong bond with our mother. Probably you don't have the same bond with your language teacher. So the social factors are different. Input may not be enough. Um, is it useful? Is the input hypothesis useful? Well, you still need a lot of input. Maybe input alone is not enough, but you still need a lot. If you don't have any input, you won't get anywhere with language. And I think it's useful, it's helpful to think about learning and acquisition when we're deciding what do we do with our time. We need to spend time on English if we want to get better at English and deciding what, what am I doing with my time? Is this learning? 
Is this acquisition? Am I doing enough acquisition? Am I doing enough learning? And thinking about how we allocate time for this reason, thinking about what we're doing is very helpful. Um, so in English education, then, we often have um, the traditional way of teaching language or teaching English. Um, I guess this may be efficient um, because we're teaching specific ideas, specific bits of grammar. We're teaching these words. Um, often in the traditional approach, the teacher is teaching. We often use textbooks. Uh, often this can be boring. If you follow the input hypothesis, uh, in the long run, this may be more efficient. Um, the students should be listening and reading most of the time. Um, they, rather than textbooks, we need stories. These stories may be in books. These stories may be movies. And hopefully the input hypothesis will mean education is fun. So we have a different kind of education. Um, this is another look at language and what I think of as the grammar industry and real language. And if we think of tests, when you're doing a language test, there's a correct answer. In the real world, often there are no correct answers. What did you have for breakfast today? What's the correct answer? Well, it's going to be different for different people. Um, and tests often have quite short texts. There's often no context. So you hear an announcement in a railway station, for example. The train is leaving platform 10 for Stoke at 14.22. If you're listening to a railway station announcement, then you know you're in a railway station. You probably know what time it is you know where you're going. So the texts that you hear or read in tests is often very different to the real world. In the real world, we have lots of context. We know where we are. We know who we're talking to. We often know why we're talking to them. We know their background. Um, and often there are no absolutes. There are no, there's no yes or no. There's no correct answer. So th there's a difference between the, the grammar industry and the, the language teaching and language testing world and the real world. And at some point you're going to use English in the real world. And sometimes the tests will help you for that. Sometimes they may not help you. Um, just to summarise, if you want to improve your English, um, there is no shortcut. There is no way to learn English in five minutes. It takes a lot more than five minutes. It takes more than five minutes per day if you want to be good at English. Um, there are easy ways, though, and there are enjoyable ways. So I would recommend you try to find ways of using English that will be fun and that mean that you spend time and spend enjoyable time and that you acquire English. Uh, just to remind you then, teaching materials must be interesting, they must be authentic, they must be real and they must be comprehensible. And this is the input hypothesis, the natural approach, if you want a reference. And that is the end. Yay!